We're going to have a look at the WPS 500 pressure transducer, uh, this time looking at in-cylinder analysis. So let's run the animation and let's see how we connect the pressure transducer in this scenario and the detail that can be revealed from this kind of test. So it does require some intrusion. Um, generally this will be spark plug removal or glow plug removal depending. So here we have four cylinder engine and we're going to do what used to be called a conventional compression test only this time with a pressure transducer. So obviously we use the adapters that are included in a kit and measure the depth of the spark plug, attach that adapter to our compression hose, switch on the pressure transducer and allow that to calibrate. So the test port at this point is open to atmosphere and we connect to channel A on Picoscope. Now look as we see the piston coming up on the compression stroke we have the peak pressure, then we have the exhaust stroke coming back down now onto the intake and then the cycle starts all over again with compression. Let's just run that through again. There's our expansion coming up now on the exhaust, over to the intake, back up our compression. So there we have 720 degrees of crankshaft rotation. So let's look at, our, uh, look at a fault scenario. So the one on the right there, we have a exhaust valve fully opening, yet the one on the left, we are not getting maximum valve lift. So we're getting compression of the lifter rather than the valve. So let's see this come around once again here. We are compressing the hydraulic lifter rather than opening the valve fully. So how does that manifest itself in the waveform? So there we have our pressure. Now we're coming back up onto the exhaust stroke and the light green waveform under there, that reveals what this should look like. There we're coming up onto compression on the expansion. We're not getting the exhaust valve full open event and we instead are getting in effect what is a compression stroke on, is the, on what is the exhaust stroke. Another scenario then, it could be blocked intake. So for demonstration purposes here, we're going to restrict the intake through contaminated air intake. So we're still getting the valve lift, but we aren't getting that compression. So here now, we have got the exhaust stroke. Coming back down onto the intake, we've got a deeper intake pocket now because our intake is restricted. And we aren't getting that compression that we saw previously because if you can't pour, pull air into the cylinder, then you can't compress. So we're revealing now mechanical or intake issues in this scenario without intruding into the engine other than attaching a pressure transducer to the cylinder and capturing the four stroke cycle. In the animation we saw the first fault was um, failure to open or fully open exhaust valve. So here's a similar scenario. This is exhaust valve failing to open uh, completely or in, in its entirety, exhaust valve failing to open. So here we have um, peak pressure TDC, the first 180 degrees that will be our expansion stroke and then here we should see the pressure change direction. So here we are in the expansion pocket, we should come up here slightly to atmospheric and then along here we should be seeing a zero bar uh, as we open the exhaust valve and vent those gases to atmospheric. Instead what we're seeing here is the piston coming up on what should be the exhaust stroke but in fact is developing a second compression and that's because the exhaust valve is failing to open. Note also how we've got this very sudden drop in pressure because around about this point here the inlet valve has opened. So we can confirm on this engine that we do have adequate compression but we've got this event here between the two compression towers that reveals to us that the exhaust valve is not opening. Sudden drop here, remember, this is actually the inlet valve opening where this pressure now will be vented into the intake manifold. So that will manifest itself as a popping in the intake. Interesting fact about this style of fault as well is when you use a conventional pressure gauge rather than a pressure transducer, um, you will have normal readings. You will not see this event because remember the compression gauge will be collecting and building compression. So your gauge will show you normal compression. 
the second waveform or the second fault we saw within the in-cylinder animation was uh, restricted intake and on this one we have no inlet valve opening event. So let's follow this through. Here we have peak compression. Well peak compression is tiny. We've got um, plus 460 millibar there. Let's put that back onto zero. Uh, we've got this huge deep expansion pocket. We do have the exhaust valve opening at the correct point because we go from this deep intake, which is uh, almost negative one bar, back up to atmospheric pressure. Now we come back down on the intake stroke, and this is really what I want to find, uh, talk about, is just how deep the intake and the expansion pockets are because the inlet valve is not opening. This is why we've got this smooth curved feature rather than having this abrupt change that we see here when a, a valve opens. So this deep dish effect confirms that we aren't pulling air into the cylinder and that's because the inlet valve does not open on this occasion. As a result of no air being pulled into the cylinder, we don't get any compression or very minimal compression. And of course, why are we getting a deep expansion pocket? That's because we're starting at TDC here with minimal pressure, yet the piston is still descending down the cylinder covering the same amount of volume. So we get this deep dish effect on both the expansion and the intake pockets. Um, your conventional pressure gauge will show you that you have a fault. Of course, it will show you low compression, but with a pressure transducer, we know why we have no compression. In cylinder analysis with the pressure transducer allows you to identify the offending stroke when tackling compression issues. Measuring and comparing each individual cylinder will allow the technician to zone into the area of concern prior to dismantling the engine.